four minutes to the gentleman from Virginia, the ranking member of the Committee on Education and the Workforce, Mr. Scott. The gentleman from Virginia is recognized for four minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of the legislation today which provides for a three-year reauthorization of the Older Americans Act. Mr. Mr. Speaker, the Committee on Education and the Workforce has been committed to seeing this legislation through, and I want to particularly thank the ranking member on our side, the ranking member of the subcommittee, Mr. Hinojosa, Representative Bonamici. I want to thank them and Chairman Klein and Representative Corbello and all of the members of our committee for making passage of this bill a reality. As ranking member of the Committee on Education and the Workforce, I have the privilege of working on legislation that affects Americans throughout their lives from childhood to advanced age. Older Americans Act was first passed 50 years ago as part of uh, President Johnson's War on Poverty to help older Americans live in dignity and stay connected to their communities by receiving essential social and nutritional services. Today, the commitment to our nation's seniors is more important than ever. One in 10 Americans over the age of 65 lives in poverty, and older Americans are working, also working longer, some because they want to, but many because they have to, so that they can secure their financial futures in the face of retirement insecurity. The spectrum of services provided through the Older Americans Act in conjunction with Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security ensure that our nation's older Americans are not left behind in their golden years. The Pew Research Center reports that the elderly population is expected to double by 2050, and without meaningful investments in services for our seniors, too many Americans who worked hard all their lives will be left struggling in their later years. But unfortunately, since 2009, Older Americans Act funding has actually dropped. Failing to invest in, older, in the Older Americans Act is bad for seniors, and it's bad for our country. Providing our seniors with health services, nutrition, and supportive services they need makes them less likely to suffer illness or injury, less likely to incur expensive hospital visits, and more likely to live independently. These investments bring dignity to the lives of our seniors and ultimately will result in significant savings to taxpayers. I'm proud that we're able to agree on increased funding on these, for these important programs. Had our investments in these programs kept up with inflation and growing population, the funding levels would have been actually higher, but thankfully we can finally say that we're moving in the right direction. Vice President Hubert Humphrey once stated that the moral test of government is how the government treats those who are in the dawn of life, our children, those who are in the twilight of life, our elderly, those who are in the shadows of life. And it's my hope that by protecting the enhancing the federal statutes to support our older Americans, we will be passing this test. Again, I want to thank my colleagues for their support of this legislation and yield back the balance of my